forced G, uh, BMX to rediscover themselves and come up with his own mixed group. So how did that happen when, when he was over there, Frank? Well, when he was over there, I mean, the only people that were mixing on the station were me, Julian, and, and Bill, and then Mike Hitman Wilson we brought on. Uh, that's it. Okay, what about Steve? No, Steve came on. That's right, Steve came on later. But but at first, that's right. It, at first it was at at first it was just me, and my uh, Julian, and Bill, and then we brought in uh, Hitman, and then we brought Steve Hurley over. Bill was like about what? Bill was like 15 years old. Yeah, he was. You know? a, he was a really but, young kid. But yeah, Bill yeah. had something that none of us had. He did something again. You know that, that none of us could do. Bill was like a little trick artist, a trickster. Mr. Survivor just walked in. Armando, what's happening, brother? What's happening, man? Oh, sure. we, were, we were just talking about your show. But you, you, you know, it, it, I, the the sad part was at that time you had GCI with the Hot Mix Five, the original members of the Hot Mix Five, and I don't think that GCI embraced them the same way that no, BMX they embraced they, them. They didn't. They were just they didn't there. We see the problem with the management there at, at uh, GCI. While they realized the the impact that uh, the Hot Mix Five had, they never really wanted to give up the the full respect to the fact that that was a major part of his getting his ass whipped. Right. So they, it was kind of a uh, come on in, but kind of a little standoffish. Right. And they wanted a little more control over its content. Which I used to fight with Marv Dyson about. I said, Marv, you can't restrict these guys to that degree because that will kill the essence of, of what they were all about. He wanted more the familiar impact. songs yeah, during the know, mix play, show. Play he play wanted it to yeah. represent more of what the station was. Exactly. And the sad part was when, again, we did the Taste Chicago, GCI was on one side of, uh, what is it, Wabash or whatever the Taste right. runs on, and we were on the other side. You got to remember how big that BMX name was. Oh, it was huge. And yeah. I don't care I if owned. you know Jesus and Moses were scratching on the turntables by GCI. Everyone still knew that BMX name was branded in their head. Right. You That's know right. what I mean? So they all went to the BMX tent. I don't care who was down at the GCI thing. They might have had a nice little crowd, you know. Right. But they still went to BMX because that's yeah. what they grew up on. That's right. You know. It was already it was, right. Exactly. And, it, and and BMX had the best location too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because you you come right across the bridge and bam, you're that's right, right there. That's right. We were the first people yeah. you saw. Yeah. And the, right and the, and and you could always tell because there was mounted. You know, my there was mounted policemen on horses, because you know you put, you you're mixing. 3,000 black kids with 4,000 white kids and 5,000 Spanish kids. Not one fight, not one problem. That's They're right. just all there to listen to the music. You yeah, know what I mean? It was, it was like the weirdest thing you've ever seen. It was. You know, it was we used, a cult. It was great. We, we would throw parties, and there would only be two doormen at a, at a, at, for 10,000 people. You know what I mean? Nobody heard of that stuff. I, I'm sure Armando will, will relate to this. When we did the first... Hot Mix Five Party. What was the name of that place we did up on the near north side? Da Vinci Manor. Da Vinci Manor. Yeah. And when I introduced the air staff, you know, it was a very well warm, you know, because we were hot, we exploded. But when I brought up the Hot Mix Five, was that about eighty four? Eh, it might have been a little no, earlier. That was, than that. that was earlier. Yeah. That was earlier. Yeah. 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 And, no, that was that was earlier. Yeah, much earlier. It was right after we we did it. I mean, they they might have been on the air what a few months. Yeah. And uh, this so it was early days of that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I remember? Uh, the UIC Pavilion, a Valentine's Day oh, Hot man. Mix Five dance party. I remember yeah. walking into the UIC Pavilion. The whole floor was see packed people. and just heads bopping up and down. That's right. That's it right. was incredible. Not a band, not another artist, nothing but the Hot Mix Five. We didn't even have a, a super light sh light show. It was four turntables, probably a couple thousand watts and some big ass speakers, and the Hot Mix Five. That's a, and no problems. Yeah, yeah. Everybody came to have a good time and to embrace and party to this stuff that they could hear on the radio. It was unreal. I've never seen anything quite like it. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, going back to the Taste of Chicago, I remember the days when we used to mix live from the Taste of Chicago. That's right. That's right. Be rocking the house. That's right. See, that, again, that was the only thing that we had left when you left, Lee, was 
I remember sitting down with Barry when the uh, when he when Barry Mayo's company eventually bought BMX. Mm -hmm. You know, he sat me in an office, uh, me and Julian both, and he said, "You know what, guys? Breaks my heart to tell you this, but we're not gonna we're not gonna do the mixes anymore because we're going more adult. You know, they went to NUA or whatever." Mm -hmm. And he goes, "It's just, uh, I it, I find it hard to sell the station when the mixes are out outperforming the radio station. How do you sell that?" And we didn't know any really anything about radio. We're like, I don't know. I don't know how you sell it. Don't look you know? at me, man. I, what are you looking at me for? You know what I mean? I'm trying to get laid. So, so you know, I, I mean, we, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But right. he was so such a nice guy, and the way he explained it yeah, to us, he right. goes, "I got to go more mass appeal because of the powers that be that were there before us. I think their egos got in the way. I think the new PDs that came in, and again, when you, I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but when you came back, you eventually left again. Right. And then the people, the powers that took over, then again tried to put their mark in and throw everybody out and let me do my own thing again. I'll show them how to do it. Yeah, that happens. Two quick points. Um, actually, we went more adult under BMX. That's right. Before, before it flipped before to V one hundred three, because I was in doing. Fact, it was an urban AC. Yeah. Yes. Before it became what it is today yeah because i was doing six to ten in the evening and you bumped me back down to part-time right <laughs> because you're going more adult and i at the time appealed to the and younger the, end the street yeah i had the street image yeah right. yeah but also you know thinking back at bmx i think actually it was probably the first rhythmic station ever because it appealed to the mass the mass audience mm -hmm. you know now they have this rhythmic top 40 but that was actually Absolutely. Probably the first one. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier because we were only about sixty percent black when we first really kicked in, and it it it, be, it grew a little bigger, but I don't think it ever went over seventy five, eighty percent, something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, why don't you introduce yourself and then let's talk about Chicago Street Hits, how that came to be, and and you hosting the mixes and you hosting. It. Well, I'm just step, giving him. Step, a, step, I'm, step, I'm just step talking to the mic, to Sal. Okay, my name's Armando. Um, you just got done editing his worldwide premiere video. <laughs> I'm 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 going to win a million dollars. Okay, I'm I'm trying to get on Survivor. I'm trying to find the easy way out to retirement. But uh, going back to street hits, <laughs> I've been trying unsuccessfully. Uh, basically, there were a lot of songs that were played in the mixes and the hot mixes um, that the mixes would only play a portion of. They didn't play the entire song. They played the hottest part of the song and moved on. So I approached Lee about featuring these songs before the mix show. And that's basically how it all came about. And he said, go for it. And he gave me the freedom to uh, pick and choose the songs that I would feature. Heaven forbid does that ever happen now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you believe in your people. And I knew Amando was well plugged in. He, he got it. He understood. <laughs> you know? That's right. <laughs> well, before the Fiero was the Pinto. Jeans. Oh, you got to go back to the Pinto now, okay? Can't diss the Pinto. Two-tone. How many pair of jeans did you have? Oh, I don't know. But I have my boots, man. Don't yeah, forget. One pair of boots and one pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I came to Chicago saying, man, ain't nobody wearing no cowboy hats. <laughs> Oh, that I'm 81, 82, somewhere around there. All I remember is the fact that I had a true story. A friend of mine had come to Chicago, had, uh, had some family members in Waukegan, and he came back to El Paso, and he said, hey, man, there's a station, this hot station in Chicago, BMX. You ought to try and get a job. At the time, I'm in El Paso, Texas, market number 80 in radio, and I'm thinking, like, you're crazy. That's market number three. <laughs> so I just blew him off, right? Uh, and the following week, he came back to my house, and he said, hey, man, did you try and get a job down there? And I'm like, are you crazy? But he said that he actually had a dream that I ended, up, that I, you know, got a job in Chicago. So at that point, I called, uh, I, I, you know, I, I called information, and I actually called JPC. was the first station I, I, I called, and I spoke to Sam Weaver, really nice guy. Talked to me for about 20 minutes, gave me the rundown of what was happening in radio in Chicago. And then uh, the following night, I called BMX, and I spoke to Carla Box. And I remember distinctly that uh, when I ended the conversation with her, I said, well, you never know. Maybe one day we'll work together. And then at that point, I called BMX, trying to reach you, Lee, 
and I was trying to get directed. I didn't want to leave no message, but the third time I left my my name and my number. And voicemail. Yeah, before voicemail. Yeah, there was somebody actually. He probably had a ton, a stack of uh, messages. Okay, and, I still and have them. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to them one day. <laughs> and then what happened at that point was is that uh, Lee called me, told me what he was doing in Chicago, and asked me to send out an air check. I still remember eighteen dollars and fifty cents it cost me to FedEx that air check. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear nothing for two or three months. Okay, I called. I, I called a couple times. And I said, "Oh, he, you know, didn't like the tape. Forgot about me." And then out of the blue, he calls me on a Saturday morning. It happens to be that Friday. I had turned down a uh, a job in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, at the time, I was in El Paso working at um, KROD, a top forty station. And um, you know, he said, "Hey, man, you want to come on down to Chicago?" And I was like a young little kid, not married, no kids. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> so he said, when can you start? I, and I was working at, at, at the Top 40 station. He said, can you start next weekend? And I'm like, well, i got to give two weeks notice, you know. So I wanted to be respectful to the, you know, the company I was working for at the time and started Christmas Day. Yeah. yeah. When you got up here, we didn't talk about this. When, when, when you got up here, you and I had talked about this last week, the difference in the music. What, what people were dancing to, what people were into radio-wise down in El Paso, and what you had known about other places, and the tempo-wise. Yeah, Texas was uh, a lot more into funk. And when I came to Chicago, the tempo of the music was so much faster. When I would call friends of mine back in El Paso and say, yo, dude, you're not going to believe the, the stuff they're dancing to up here, you know? You know, the black audience, you know? In in, in Texas, man, it was it was funk all the way, you know? People want to go out there on the dance floor and, and, and just funk out up here in Chicago, man. They were just, whoo, that music was fast. It was like, 